I'm not surprised that, um, that according to reports that Rolf Harris is on suicide watch. One suspects he's too narcissistic to kill himself, but they say he has suffered from depression. Um, I don't know. Um, if he did kill himself, there'd be no loss. I used to say about other people of his ilk, that that's one more vote for a cleaner Australia. So he's near the end of his life. And if he decided he'd, he'd rather depart now than spend four or five years in jail, then that's his call. That's his choice. I'm, there must be fascinating family stories to tell because all this couldn't have gone on unnoticed. Um, Bindi especially is a person who, well, you could say sold a soul to the devil. When, when Australia woke up and heard the news that uh, Rolf Harris had been found guilty on all 12 charges, I think for a lot of people, for journalists especially, there's a lot of feeling of, of satisfaction, um, a bit of surprise, because when a jury's been out that long, the adage usually is that uh, a jury out for a long time comes back with a not guilty verdict. There was the thing, of course, of trying to get unanimous verdicts, and the fact they came in unanimously on all 12, I think, was quite a... Uh, was quite something. But since we've had time for this to sink in now about what Rolf Harris did, and since the guilty verdict, and since some of the, some of the uh, restrictions have come off, and more and more people are coming forward to tell us about what they knew about Rolf Harris, what he'd done in the past, how many decades this went on for. Now, in my case, after I named him back in November 2012, on 3AW and then also on my, on my blog, I received um, several emails from women in their 50s who said, look, I was a teenage dancer back in the 1960s and it was a code with the girls at Channel 9 that you just didn't go into the room alone with Rolf Harris. Now they're talking 40, 50 years ago. So his reputation has been out there for a long, long time. And more of them are coming out now. My, my own... Um, my own producer at 2GB back in the mid-1990s, Nikki Clement, she just emailed me um, overnight and said that Rolf Harris groped her when she was bringing him into my studio to be interviewed and you have the on-air light which is flashing saying don't open the door and they were standing outside the door waiting to, for the light to go off so they could come into the studio during the commercial break and she said he groped her, he grabbed her. So there's another one. You've got the makeup artist at Channel 7, you've got other people overseas, you've got the the, the um, TV presenter in, in London who said that uh, he put his hand up her skirt when um, live on television, which reminded me of that awful footage of, of his friend, Jimmy Savile, when he was doing that Christmas special and you now can see the look of horror on a young girl's face when Savile puts his hand up a dress or grabs her from behind on camera. That's how arrogant, that's how confident these guys were. Um, Savile, Harris... And there obviously, and there were more, there were more of them. But the thing that's starting to worry me is that I received an email today uh, from a friend and this is starting to creep in. He, um, he, he wrote to me, he's lost a friend over this. He wrote to me and he said that, um, he said, I've been ropeable all day and part of last night. I was speaking to a now former friend of mine last night and the subject of Harris came up. To be honest, I thought what I heard was a joke. And this person said to him, the poor old bloke only felt them up a bit and it's not as if he raped them or anything. Now, yes, there were cases of him just being an old, a dirty old man, as you would call him, and dismiss it. But keep in mind, uh, and it was unpleasant for the women concerned, but keep in mind here, the victims that he was convicted over, one was a seven-year-old girl who went up on stage to get his autograph and he sexually assaulted her. The case of his daughter Bindi's best friend. She was only 13 when he started having sexual contacts with her and she became an alcoholic and she, she had led a, a terrible life after that. Um, so keep in mind what, he's, what he did and, and how often he did it. And then to see him, and keep this in mind too, he showed no remorse. He showed no apology. He called all those victims liars. He said in the witness box they were making it up. He... Um, he did that disgusting stuff of playing the didgeridoo, playing the star in the witness box, thinking with the arrogance he showed by doing all this over all these years, he was thinking that I can win this jury over because I'm Rolf Harris. They'll believe me. So he told jokes. He played the didgeridoo and he sang a little bit of um, Jake the Pig. Uh, that just shows the arrogance. 
and I guess it shows that people in his situation think that they could get they could get away with it. Jimmy Savile could get away with it. We're now finding out, apart from the repugnant stuff about Jimmy Savile and necrophilia and visits to the morgue, um, that Savile took Rolf Harris to a psychiatric hospital, and they just timed their visit for when the, the some of the girls, uh, the troublemakers, were being forced to strip every night teenagers before they got into bed to show they weren't taking anything to bed that could could harm them and that's just when Harris and Savile happened to happen to turn up and Savile as we now know there have been cases that he actually sexually molested um, handicapped um, handicapped girls uh, he's being ridiculed and despised around the world he's being stripped of his all of his orders uh, as he should be as he should be um, and his age I suppose will come into it when he's sentenced because uh, if he spends five years in jail, it could be the last five years of his life. But uh, I was, uh, it was weird to see a, a spokesman for the family say, pleading with people to respect their privacy. I mean, he didn't respect the privacy of all those young girls. He doesn't deserve to have his privacy uh, respected now. Uh, I, and c keep this in mind, except in the witness box, with a very self-serving case, which the jury did not believe. The jury, keep this in mind, called Rolf Harris a liar. Because he said this happened, this didn't happen. The jury didn't believe him. They didn't believe him at all. But apart from in the witness box, he has never said a word about this. Even when he was first accused, no public statement. No, no even, not even a public denial. Just nothing. As he walked in and out of court, nothing. Um, it's a you could say it's a sad case. I don't believe it is because he's still showing the arrogance of that I could get away with it. What the police say, um, you know, the, these crimes were committed in sight. They were so confident of, of what they could do and get away with, they never dreamed that it would all come tumbling down or they'd be found out. And if found out, they never believed that, um, that, that uh, anybody would believe the victims and not believe them. Same in Robert Hughes' case in the Hey Dad case. I put a, um, a poll up on my website saying what sort of um, jail sentence should Rolf Harris get because the judge said he will get jail time. And I put the options. I put six months, one year, um, two years, three to five, five to ten. I immediately got uh, emails from people saying, y you haven't put enough. So I went back to the poll and changed it from five to ten, ten plus. Um, I don't think he will serve that time. He may get... 10 years jail. I suspect, hinge at hunch, it'll be about a total of five and he'll serve two. I think that's what it'll be. But the judge will take into consideration um, his public fall from grace, his public humiliation, which is all earned and all deserved. Um, but age should not come into it in terms of letting him walk. But I think he'll probably probably serve about two years in jail. He should lose all his... All his all his uh, medals and all his honours and all his gongs. There will be questions asked about um, what's happening like in Western Australia. They're tearing down his paintings and they're going to dig up his star in the, in the pavement sort of thing. Um, I don't know what you do with that. Um, I, I, I mean, do you not listen to Wagner because he wasn't a very nice person? Uh, I, I personally don't go to Woody Allen movies because I, that's my personal protest. So the idea, I suppose, is don't listen to... Rolf Harris music or things like that, so you don't help his royalties. I think in a way you have to separate the artist from the art. I find it hard to. I, I haven't in the case of Woody Allen. As I said, I, I won't go to his movies. That's my little personal protest. But um, do you look back? I don't know every movie star I've ever seen or every artist I've admired uh, or musician I've listened to, whether I know or admire their moral stance on things. I think sometimes you have to, but if you feel strongly when the person is exposed for what they've done, and this here is a lifelong serial pedophile. I mean, even look at the, the child porn charges, which he, he was lucky that they severed those um, from the, the trial that's just over. Uh, the defence managed to get those separated. He has been charged with child pornography. Um, the Prosecution said that they found child pornography. We've seen the names of some of the disgusting titles on the uh, on the the videos he downloaded. His defence was saying it was accidental. He was just browsing for legal stuff when he found all this. But then 
the prosecution found his diaries and handwritten in his diaries were instructions on how to hide sites you've been to or how to delete evidence of sites you've been to. You don't do that when you accidentally stumble on a child porn site. So on those charges, I think he should be tried and, um, and if guilty, then he should be sentenced for that as well. One thing I do think will come out of this, I know there has been suggestions of a Royal Commission in Britain in the entertainment industry uh, because of the way the BBC covered up all the Jimmy Savile um, um, allegations. They even had their own program ready to go to air, which they, which they pulled off air. But maybe there will be more, more investigation um, of the show business closets. I mean, is it because you're a, you're a great singer or a great dancer or a great uh, actor that you can get away with things that other people can't, things that are illegal. Um, you know, we know that there were rock groups touring Australia going back as far as the Beatles where some of the, the girls, I'm sure, that they were betting were teenagers uh, and underage. But of course, in this case, in cases like, like Savile and cases like Harris, there was no sense at all of even misguided um, consent. No consent at all. I mean, these are... These were girls who were, some were just, were just molested, others um, he groomed. That little girl who is Bindi's best friend, she was groomed and she paid a price for, for a long, long time. Rolf Harris's family reaction to this is amazing. Well, the public reaction, we've seen it day after day, week after week, from day one. There they were, this tableau uh, of them holding hands, walking slowly like a red carpet, um, not in the Academy Awards, well, that was the Academy Award performance, but walking into court. There was a lot of criticism of the family afterwards, of Alwyn and Bindi, because, and, and one of his nieces, they were smiling as they walked out of court. What the hell were they smiling about? I mean, if they believed him, and you find that very hard to believe, especially in Bindi's case, um, if just to support him, they, they would be shocked and sad and surely, but what was happening to him? I mean, here's their husband, their father is going to jail. And just to wrap this up, we all know that Rolf Harris is a pedophile, but there are hundreds, thousands of men out there, some convicted, many convicted, who are pedophiles, and we don't know who they are because we do not have a public register of convicted sex offenders, which is why I'm saying to you now, sign my petition. We now have 136,000 people have signed it. I'd love to get it to 150,000 before I go to Queensland to meet with the Attorney General up there. It is an important issue. It's gonna take time but it will happen.